Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering what are error correction methods in data link layer. Guys, I have uploaded complete computer network subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Error control mean whenever senders send data to receiver due to some noise or interference in network, receiver may receive error in the data. For example, Sender will send data to receiver like hello. For example, hello binary code is 10110111. But due to some noise or interference in network, last bit 1 is changed to 0. So receiver may receive data like JELLO. In place of H, receiver will receive data like JELLO, which is wrong message. Now data link layer will identify this error and as well as data link layer will correct this error by using various error control methods. Error control is the process of finding and fixing errors in the data transmission so that receiver gets the correct data. It ensures that if any error caused by noise or interference in the network are corrected. Guys, error correction methods are mainly classified into three types. And the first one is retransmission method. We also call this retransmission method as ARQ method, where ARQ stands for automatic repeat request method. Whenever receiver receives error in the data, Receiver will correct that error just by saying sender to retransmit that same data again. So receiver will ask sender to send that same data again. This is how receiver corrects the error in the data. ARQ methods are classified into two types. And the first one is discrete ARQ and second one is continuous ARQ. At first I will explain what is discrete ARQ. Whenever sender send data to receiver, receiver will give replay whether data is received correctly or not. We call this replay message as acknowledgement. If data is received correctly, then receiver will give positive ACK and whenever receiver receives error in the data, then receiver will give negative acknowledgement for sender. If sender receives negative acknowledgement, then sender will send that same data again. So in discrete ARQ, receiver will give replay to sender that is positive replay or negative replay. We call that replay as acknowledgement that is ACK. If sender receives negative SEK, then sender will again send that same data again. The next one is continuous ARQ. Whereas in continuous ARQ, complete data is divided into parts and then each part is transferred to receiver. For example, let us say, sender will send data like, hello, how are you? Hello is one part, how is one part, R is one part and U is one part. So in continuous ARQ, complete data is divided into various parts and all these parts are continuously transferred to receiver. That is why we call this method as continuous ARQ. If receiver receives data with error, then receiver will again ask sender to send only that error record part. For example, receiver receives data like, hello, how are you? But if you observe you, in place of why were you, receiver will receive data like, why are you? As only this part got error, then receiver will ask sender only to send that error record part. So sender will again send that you. After receiver receiving error record part, then receiver will reconstruct that message like hello, how are you? And then receiver reads this message. This is all about continuous ARQ. So first error correction method is retransmission method. We also call it as automatic repeat request method. That is ARQ method. And whereas second one is symbol substitution method. Name itself says symbol substitution. Whenever receiver receive any characters with error, this symbol substitution method will include some special symbols like question mark symbol if any characters are corrupted and there will be human operator who will identify this question marks and then this human operator will correct errors manually. This method uses manual correction to fix errors. If a character is corrupted, it replaces with a special symbol like question mark. A human operator checks and correct data manually. Then this method is used in older telegraph systems. This method is not commonly used today. And whereas third method is forward error correction method. Yes, whereas in forward error correction method, Along with our data, we will add extra bits. And by using that extra bits, we can check error in the data. For example, let's say I will send hello. Binary bits of hello is 1011. For example, along with my data, forward error correction method will add some extra bits like 110. These extra bits are used to check and as well as correct errors in the data. Guys, we will use forward error correction in satellites and as well as in wireless networks. One of the famous forward error correction method is Hamming code method. 
Yes, I will explain Hamming code method with example. Next, I will explain what is Hamming code method. Yes, whenever one computer sends data to other computer, this Hamming code method is used to detect and as well as correct error in the data. Errors can happen due to noise. Whenever error occurs, bit 0 is changed to 1 and as well as 1 is changed to 0. This Hamming code method was invented by Richard Hamming. That is why they give a name Hamming code. By using this Hamming code method, Data will be transferred from one computer to other computer without any errors. I will explain one simple problem by using Hamming code. There is 7 bit code and data is 1101. Add parity bits. Guess in question they given. Total there are 7 bits. Out of 7 bits, 4 data bits are given. 4 data bits are 1101. And we need to find parity bits. As we know, out of 7, 4 are data bits. And remaining 3 are parity bits. Now we need to find what are parity bits. Guess Hamming code contains both data bits and as well as parity bits. Parity bits are nothing but parity bits are the extra bits added to our data. These parity bits are used to detect and as well as correct errors in the data. Total 7 bits starting from bit 1 to bit 7. At first we need to identify in which positions we need to place 3 parity bits. For that you need to remember formula that is 2 power n where n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Just you need to remember formula that is 2 power n in order to identify positions of parity bits. So n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. So at first I will take 2 power 0. 2 power 0 is nothing but 1. So in first position we can place parity bit. So first parity bit is in position 1. Next n value is 1. So now 2 power 1. 2 power 1 is nothing but 2. So second position is available. So in second position we can place parity bit. And next to 2 square that is 2 into 2 that equal to 4. So, fourth position is available. So, in fourth position we can place parity bit. And next to 2 cube that is 2 into 2 into 2. 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8. But if you observe here, 8th position is not available. As there are total 7 bits, only there are 7 positions. As we need to find 3 parity bits, we got position of 3 parity bits. They are P1, P2 and P4. So, we can place parity bits in position 1, 2 and 4. We got positions of parity bits. Now we will place our data bits in remaining positions. That is, we need to place data bits 1101. So 1101. So in remaining positions, we can fill data bits. Now what are the bits we need to place in these positions? We need to identify that. At first we will find parity bit in position 1. So just remember formula. P1 mean take 1 and skip 1. As position will start from 1. We will take position 1 and we will skip 1. That is, we will skip 2 and again take 3 and skip 4 and similarly take 5 and skip 6 and take 7 and no other bits are available. So, you can leave. So, P1 mean take 1, skip 1 and start from 1. So, we are starting from 1, take 1, skip 2, take 3, skip 4, take 5, skip 6 and take 7. So, positions are P1, 3, 5, 7. That there is no value in P1. So, leave it. And whereas in position 3, value is 1 and whereas in position 5 value is 0 and whereas in position 7 value is 1. So now values are 101. If you observe here there are two 1's which is even number. So if there are even 1's then parity bit is 0 and if there are odd number of 1's then parity is 1. As there are two even 1's then our parity will be 0. So parity bit 1 value is 0. So now we got parity bit value that is 0. Next we will find P2 value. So P2 mean take 2, skip 2 and start from 2. So we need to start from 2, take 2 values that is 2, 3, skip 2 values. So we will skip 4, 5 and again we will take 6, 7. After 7 there are no values, we can stop. So now we got positions of P2 that is 2, 3, 6, 7. As there is no value in P2 position, so you can leave. And position 3 contains value that is 1. And similarly, position 6 contains value 1 and position 7 contains value 1. So, value of P2 is 3 bull 1. There is total there are 3 ones, which is odd number. If there are odd number of ones, then parity value is 1. So, now P2 value is 1 because there are odd number of ones. Now, we will find P4 value. Thus, P4 mean take 4, skip 4 and start from 4. So, starting from 4, we will take 4 values. So, P4 is equal to 4, 5, 6, 7 and there are no values available to skip, you can leave. So, P4 no value is available, you can leave and P5 value is 0, P6 value is 1 
and P7 value is 1. So now P4 values are 0, double 1. As there are even number of ones, so parity value is 0. So P4 value is 0. Yes, now we got three parity bits. They are 0, 1, 0. So along with our data, we need to add parity bits to our data. By using these parity bits, Hamming code method will identify and correct errors. So parity bits are P1, P2 and P4. And whereas data bits are D3, D5, D6, D7. This is how Hamming code method will find parity bits when data bits are given. This is one more example. A 7 bit Hamming code is issued as 1011011. Assume even parity and state whether received code is correct or not. Yes, we got this code that is 1011011. This is 7 bit data which receiver got. Now we need to identify whether this code contains errors or not. At first, we need to find parity bits. So, in order to find positions of parity bits, formula is 2 power n, where n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. So, first we will take 2 power 0, 2 power 0 is 1. So, parity bit position is 1, and next to 2 power 1. So, parity bit position is 2, and next to 2 square, that is 2 into 2, that is equal to 4. So, parity bit position is 4, and next to 2 cube, that is 2 into 2 into 2, that is 8. 8 position is not available. So, we can ignore. So, now we got positions of parity bits. They are P1, P2 and P4. Guess in question they given even parity. Even parity is nothing but all parity bits must contain even number of ones. If there are any odd number of ones in parity bits, then our data contains errors. At first, we will find value of position 1. As P1 mean take 1, skip 1 and start from 1. So, I will take 1, skip 2. Take 3, skip 4 and take 5, skip 6 and take 7. So, P1 value is 1, P3 value is 0, position 5 contains value 1 and position 7 contains value 1. If you observe here, 1, 2, 3, odd number of 1s. So, we got error data. And similarly, we will find P2. P2 mean take 2, skip 2 and start from 2. So, starting from 2, we will take 2 values. That is 2, comma 3 and we will skip 4, comma 5 and take 6, comma 7. So, position 2 value is 1, position 3 value is 0, and whereas in position 6 value is 0, and whereas in position 7 value is 1. So, 1, 0, 0, 1. As there are even number of 1s, so there is no error in P2 position. And next one is P4. P4 mean take 4, skip 4, and start from 4. So, starting from 4, we will take 4 values. They are position 4, 5, 6, 7. And there are no other values, we can stop here. So, P4 value is 1. P5 value is 1, P6 is 0, and P7 is 1. As there are odd number of ones, so parity 4 contains error data. Guess in question they given even parity. Even parity is nothing but all parity bits must contain even number of ones. If there are any odd number of ones in parity bits, then our data contains errors. Thus, if there are odd number of ones, parity value is 1, and if there are even ones, parity value is 0. So, P1 value is 1, P2 value is 0, and whereas P4 contain odd number of ones. So, P4 value is 1. So, now we will identify in which position we got error. So, total parity values are 1, 0, 1, base 2. So, 2 power 0, 2 power 1, and 2 square. 2 power 0 is 1. 1 into 1, that is 1. And 2 power 1 is 2 into 0. So, value is 0 plus 2 square, that is 4. 4 into 1, 4. So, 4 plus 0 plus 1 that equal to 5. So, in position 5, data bit contain error. So, in position 5, we need to change 1 to 0. This is how Hamming code will find errors in data.